I'm Dr. Perry Halkidis, and today I am the face of America. So one of the ideas that I talk about in the book is normalizing. And what I think Pete Buttigieg does is normalize the possibility that a gay man could be president of the United States. Never in my lifetime did I think I would be married, and I am. Never in my lifetime did I think an openly gay man could be become candidate for president of the United States and be a viable candidate, and Pete Buttigieg is. And what I think his story tells us is that, you know what? It doesn't matter what your sexual orientation is. It doesn't matter what your race is. It doesn't matter what your religion is. If you are firm to your beliefs and you are smart and you are honorable, you can be a viable candidate in this country. And what I love most about the candidacy of Pete Buttigieg is the message that the 12 year olds and the 7 year olds and the 14 year olds and the 20 year olds and the 56 year olds like myself are getting that it's okay to be a gay man and a gay man can be and will one day be the President of the United States. My name is Perry Halkidis. I'm the Dean of the School of Public Health at Rutgers University and the Director of the Center for Health Identity Behavior and Prevention Studies. I am an LGBTQ health researcher. I am a public health psychologist who tries to improve the well-being of the LGBTQ population. So I was born in New York City in Astoria, Queens uh, to immigrant Greek parents in 1963. I lived in Astoria until I was 18 years old, and then ever since then I've been living on the island of Manhattan. So I am a true New Yorker through and through, a Queens boy who became a Manhattan man. My parents were very industrious, loving, uh, magnanimous uh, immigrant parents who, you know, when I came out to them as a gay man, you know, in a traditional sort of family, they might have rejected me, but my parents were very loving. They loved their son. They loved the child that they had raised. And as a result of that, they just loved me. So what they told me and what they showed me was acceptance and love and inclusion of all people. And that has permeated my life and that life of my brother. They also sh showed me that by hard work, you can accomplish many things, but ultimately, the things that matter in life are about kindness to other human beings. That's the most important lesson I've learned from them. LGBT issues are complicated issues in the United States and they're divisive issues in so much that, as I had said earlier, there's a tendency for some people to other or to marginalize those who are different from them. So they utilize you know, traditional paradigms of religion to try to marginalize them. This oppression that goes on has nothing to do really with the quality of people who are part of the LGBTQ population. It just has to do with othering and making people who act different, look different, live differently, be cast aside. And they are politicized because the, evangelical, the evangelicals, the Christians who gained power under the Reagan administration, have utilized and weaponized the Bible in a way to deny LGBTQ people rights within this country. Unfortunately, a large part of the Republican Party are these, are these evangelical Christians. So in my book, Out in Time, I share the life stories of 15 men, five from three generations, what I call the Stonewall generation, the AIDS generation, and the queer generation. Um, the, the Stonewall generation are men who are now in their 60s and 70s, the AIDS generation men like me in their 40s and 50s, and the queer generation men in their 20s. And I, what I wanted to look at was what was the process, what was the experience of being a gay man and coming out as a young gay man, how does it look different across time? And certainly, each of those generations had different struggles, and certainly over the course of the last 50 years, the socio and political conditions for LGBTQ people in the United States and in other parts of the world, not all parts of the world, have gotten better. But the reality of coming out, the reality of feeling different, the reality that a five-year-old experiences is no different in 1959 than it is in 2019. And what I was able to examine in this book was the consistency of the psychological process and the ongoing struggle gay men experience because they don't feel normal in a society that makes them feel abnormal. And how if that abnormality, if that feeling of abnormality does not go checked or helped, 
that those feelings can turn into destructive behaviors for gay men that compromise their health and well-being. And that was my incentive for the book. The, there was a second incentive, which is we have to tell the history of our population. And so the best way for populations to tell their history is to write their history rather than expecting other people to write it for them. And that's the second reason I wrote the book. The most common stupid question straight men ask couples of gay men is, who's the woman, who's the wife? As if somehow we have these traditional gender roles that we take place. One of the jokes I always make about straight men though is they always think that gay men are hot, are hot for them. Straight men overestimate their attractiveness, unfortunately. Um, and there's plenty of hot gay men for us to, to go and have, uh, to be around.